Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to start with the boosting algorithms. To begin with, we'll start with adaptive boosting. Boosting algorithms are quite popular in computations as they enhance the performance of the basic models. If you follow this video till end, you'll not only get a very intuitive understanding of boosting, but you'll also get to know how to apply boosting to a data. This is a detailed video. Do watch it completely to grab the complete understanding of this topic. So boosting algorithms rely on weak learners. What is a weak learner? It's a very, very basic model. For example, it's something like a decision tree. We also call it decision stump. It's a decision tree of depth one, which means you just look at one variable and depending on its level, you decide whether it's a yes or no. So weak learners are not capable of making decisions based on complicated choices. They keep the decisions very simple. We'll see a little more of it as we progress. So let's say we begin with the data. We have two classes here a class blue and a class red. Now this data is something that we're going to give as an input to a weak learner. This is our model one, the first model. You can imagine this to be a very simple decision tree of depth one. Based on the input, the model is going to make a choice as to how it's going to classify these blue and red points. Let's say it was able to draw a line like this and it says the region below this line is going to be red and the region above this line is supposed to be all blue points. But if that is the way we decide, then we are probably making some mistakes. So all these points encircled are errors. We said this region is supposed to be red, but we got some blue points here. Likewise, we said the region above this line is supposed to be all blues, but in actual data, we see some red points here. So these are our mistakes. Now, the best part about adaptive boosting, and that's why it's called adaptive, is because it gives higher weightage to the misclassifications subsequently. Very intuitively understanding, it's like we study multiple topics before our exams, but there could be certain topics that we are weak with. We need to allocate more time to those topics, refer to more material on those topics. So adaptive boosting does exactly the same thing. Now, in the successive iterations, it's going to give a higher weightage to these points. So you can see the radius of these points has gone up compared to the other points. Why? Because adaptive boosting says we need to focus more on these points. So we have model two. So let's see how model two would decide. Model two has been told to give emphasis to these points. So it decides a line like this, where these points, which were earlier marked as errors, have been classified properly to a large extent, or maybe completely here. But model two is still making some errors because as per model two, anything below this slanted line would be blue. Anything above this would be red. And if that is the case, while the earlier errors have been corrected, we seem to be making some new errors. And what are those? These are these points. This point is partially into the red zone, but we can discount it. However, these points are clearly misclassified. So now we have to repeat the process. This time, these points which have been misclassified will be given a higher weightage which means we'll see them as circles with bigger radius. And this is just a way to visually represent it so that you understand that the points are being given higher weightage. Now at this stage, this output is ready to be given as an input to the next model. So we go to model three, and this is how our data is looking like right now. Model three would further try to do a classification. Let's say this is how the model three works. So model three was able to draw a line where it was able to fix some of these errors. For example, this point here, seems to be properly classified now because model three suggests this is supposed to be blue. These two points here are also classified properly because model three says these are supposed to be reds. But even though we highlighted this point earlier, this doesn't seem to have worked very well, but we are not willing to compromise. So we'll say that, you know what? We need better results. While out of four errors, three errors have been fixed. We still have some errors left. Let's fix those. So then finally, model three would say that I am going to concentrate on this one and I'll give it even higher weightage. So now the only point that we're going to concentrate on is this misclassified point. And this goes as an input to the next model. And that next model says, okay, this is the error that I need to fix. And I can do that easily by doing classification like this. So the next model draws a line like this. And now you can see you've perfectly segregated the reds and the blues. So finally, now all the points are properly classified. The reds and blues have been segregated pretty well. You can imagine this is a very intuitive process for a human being because we can just look at the data and draw a line anywhere. But for a computer, which can't see, this has to be a sequence of logical steps to be followed with improvement and in an adaptive way. That's why it is called adaptive boosting. So the next slide kind of indicates we went through a sequence of steps 
These are the outputs of different models, which finally led us to an outcome where we got the perfect separation here. I hope you understood how this works visually, but now let's understand how does it actually apply on the data. For that, we'll have to take a small data set. Let's say we have some data related to credit risk. So we have features like credit score, the average account balance in thousands of dollars, the work experience in years, and finally we have the approval status. So this one here means that the loan was approved and zero means that the loan was rejected. We would have a lot of data, but we've just taken first 10 records for our reference right now so that we can understand how adaptive boosting really works. So let's say we are going to concentrate only on one feature and see how that would explain the status or loan approval. That feature is credit score. And now we are going to concentrate on how credit score can help us arrive at an approval decision. So now you've seen in case of adaptive boosting, there is a mechanism to assign higher weightage to the misclassified records. But as of now, there is no question of misclassification because we've just started looking at the data. So to begin with, the weightage assigned to each record would be nothing but one over the total number of records. Let's say we have 10 records. So we will say the weightage assigned to each record is going to be 0.1, 1 divided by 10, equal weightage, uniformly distributed. And if you add all these values, this will add up to 1 because we have 10 records. Now let's say we bring a simple decision tree. It could be any other basic model, but we are starting with a decision tree, which is a tree of depth one, not a very complicated decision tree, which says, I want to make a decision based on the credit score. And the logic it applies is that if the credit score is less than 650, we will reject the loan application. If it's greater than or equal to 650, we will approve the loan application. Approval here is represented as one and rejection is represented as zero in this data, in the status column. So based on this logic, can we generate predictions? Which means we have to just compare these values with 650. If the value is greater than 650, we will say it's a one. If it's less than 650, we will say it's a zero, which means rejected. So let's generate a prediction column using this logic. So this was 700, we got a one. This was 640, which is less than 650. So we got a zero, 810, 800. These are all greater. So these are all ones. Anything less than 650, we are putting it as zero. So this is how the prediction has been generated. Now let's concentrate on the actual labels, which are captured in the status column versus the predicted values. So if you see this, we seem to be making mistakes at a couple of places. There is no problem if a one is called a one or a zero is called a zero. But if this is an actual one, we ended up predicting as a zero, or this is an actual zero, but we ended up calling it a one, then we are making a mistake. So let's highlight these. Out of 10 opportunities that we had, twice we seem to have made a mistake. For the remaining eight times, we seem to be predicting accurately. Now these are the misclassified records and we want to assign weights to them. But how do we derive the weights? So our error rate is 0.2, which is two out of 10 predictions. The question is how do we decide the weightage for these records? And in adaptive boosting, not only that the records are weighted, even the trees are weighted. So using the weights that we derive for a tree, we will derive the weight assigned to a record. How do we do that? So there is a parameter called alpha. The formula to calculate alpha is it is half times the log to the base E of one minus error divided by error. Here is the error. We can put this value here and compute output alpha, which is 0.693. This 0.693 is not the weight to be assigned to the record, but the weight to be assigned to the decision tree or the weak learner that has led us to this stage. Now, how do we derive the weight to be assigned to the records? There is a logic that's followed for that purpose. And the logic is simple. For correct predictions, we are going to take the old weight, which in our case was 0.1 across, and multiply it by E raised to the power negative of alpha. E is Euler's constant, which is 2.718. Alpha is something that we computed here. So, which means we are giving relatively less weight to the correct predictions. But for the incorrect predictions, if you see, there is a change in sign here. What used to be negative alpha has become just alpha here. So we are emphasizing on giving a higher weightage to incorrect predictions using this logic. Now, if we do these calculations, taking old weight as 0.1 and alpha as 0.693, we can do this calculation to come up with the new weights. There's one more step here to normalize these weights because right now these weights are not adding up to one. So we are not able to assign it a relative weightage. We want the misclassified values to be assigned a relatively higher weightage. In order to be able to do that normalization, we'll have to do a sum total of this column 
and divide each value by the sum total. That will give us the normalized weights, which will add up to one. How does that look like? It comes up like this. Now, if you add all these values in the column, this will give you one. And you can see that the misclassified records have been assigned much higher weights. These are four times more than the weights assigned to the other records, which were classified properly. So these two misclassified records have weight of 0.25 each. So this is how the weights for the misclassified records are derived. This has been done just for one week learner. Now, this data that we have will be resampled. We will select options with a replacement and that will be given as an input to the next week learner or a decision star. Because these options have been assigned a higher weightage, in the resampling piece, these options have a higher chance of getting selected, which means the resample data would have abundance of these observations which were misclassified. And that data will be given as an input to the next week learner, which in turn would repeat the same step. So two important things to remember for adaptive boosting. Number one, it is assigning different weights to different records depending on the classification. If there is an error, it is giving a higher weight. Plus, it is also assigning a weight to the decision trees, decision stumps, or any weak learner that you're using as the base estimator. So just to summarize, we've seen two approaches which use multiple trees. One was random forest, and the other we've discussed now is adaptive boosting. What is the main difference between these two approaches? First of all, in random forest, we try to keep the trees independent and they are grown in parallel. Whereas in case of adaptive boosting, the trees are not independent. They are generated sequentially not in parallel. Second point is all the trees have equal say in case of random forest. There is no concept of a relatively high weightage being assigned to a particular tree. Whereas in case of adaptive boosting, the weak learners are weighed according to alpha. The trees have weights which are derived as per alpha. All the records in case of random forest also have an equal say are weighed equally. But in case of adaptive boosting, we've discussed misclassified records are assigned higher weights. Now, random forest is relatively more robust to noisy data. We are not saying that it's totally robust, but relatively more robust to noisy data. But adaptive boosting is comparatively less robust to the noisy data. Why? Because it will try to even learn from the noisy records. If those are misclassified, it'll try to give them a weightage too. And the last point, random forest is relatively less prone to overfitting. It does overfit, but compared to adaptive boosting, it is relatively less prone to overfitting. Whereas in case of adaptive boosting, since you are giving higher weightage to the misclassified records, you're likely to overfit, which means it is quite possible that your training performance is not retained on the test set. Well, that brings us to an end of this video on adaptive boosting. Hope you had something new to learn from this.